Predators offseason still relatively quiet, at least in terms of free agency market. Is that fine with you, or do the Predators need to be doing more? That is a debate we'll tackle today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Plus, development camp is officially in the books. We had our big prospects game on Friday. and was there. She'll so share some of her insights, and uh, we will hear from some of the Preds' top prospects. All coming up today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day every single day. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at OnTheForeCheck.com, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I am Ian Kimmel. I'm a writer at OnThePoreCheck.com. Before we get any further, want to mention today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline has you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline, where the game starts. Uh, And if I were a betting man, Ann, uh, I would say Preds fans probably maybe a little bit in panic mode right now. Based on the way at least the open market has gone so far, uh, a lot of the big second line wingers and second line forwards are off the boards. Uh, Preds haven't really done much to address that need. Uh, a couple of depth moves so far. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, what what do you think of the Preds off season so far? Well, let's okay, like let's let's narrow that down. Post Forsberg signing. There we go. Uh, Let's take that out of the equation. What do you think of what the Preds have done so far? Yeah, I think we definitely have to divide up Nashville Predator time by pre-Forsberg and post-Forsberg because everything is a little bit different now. But when we're looking at straight up just free agency, I feel a little bit like I'm standing outside a hotel and a bunch of other people are getting in taxis and I'm just still waiting for my ride. Like this is... Nashville Predators fans have watched several players that were interesting get in a cab and head off to some other team. And I will say for the most part, the price that they, you know, that has been paid for some of these players, I'm like, yep, nope, or or term, yep, nope, that's not a contract that would work well for the Nashville Predators. There have been a couple, though, where I thought, mm, I would have gotten that cab. And so it's a little bit like I'm kind of wondering, what are we doing? Are we just not going to do free agency? And is Poyle working on some sort of a trade? Because the greatest need that this team has is a second line winger. And they've gone out and and they've done a great job getting McDonough. And, you know, they've picked up somebody for possible fourth line minutes, which is great. But like we're still looking for our second line winger and so many potential plugins for that have, have gotten in their cabs and gone. So, I mean, let's hope Phil Kessel is still in the house, my friends, because, you know, I don't know. It just, it feels like we're watching a lot happen for other teams and there's not a lot going on right now for Nashville. And I think for me, I'm like, okay, does he like, okay, are we sure he sees it? Like, he sees it, right? He knows we need a second-line guy, right? He knows there's a hole there, right? Like, he can see that, right? It's not just us. So there's an ounce of panic, but I also hold on to the hope that perhaps there is – maybe he's looking at something from a trade standpoint more than a free agency standpoint. So that's kind of where I'm at. I don't know where you're at emotionally and logistically with all this. I mean, it it seems like that's kind of the move at this point is maybe he has a better control over the deal if he goes out and gets something via trade Mm -hmm. rather than having to overpay. Because like like we said before, the Predators have cap space, uh, but it's still not exactly like the best cap situation. Like we've Mm -hmm. talked about it. They have a lot of money tied up and a lot of key players over the next at least three years 
Uh, they don't get a lot of salary cap relief over the next right. couple of years. Um, you know, the only big UFAs coming off the books are going to be, uh, you know, now Zach Sanford, Michael McCarron, and Mark Borbietsky. Uh, and you have Dante Fabro, Tanner Janot needing new deals, and, and Alex Carrier next year. So it's not like you can look at it and say, oh, okay, well, we can, you know, kind of overpay this year because we know we're going to have some cap relief coming up. The Preds right. don't really have that luxury right now unless they go out and move another contract. Um, which is something that's kind of an interesting proposition. Like, is there a trade out there where you can maybe unload one of your bigger contracts, get that off the books, so maybe you have more room to go out there and retool your top six? Okay, so when you're talking moving one of your bigger contracts, put a name with that and talk me through it. I mean, at at this point, would it be Ryan Johansson? (sighs) Okay. So here is my question with moving Ryan Johansson's contract. Love Ryan Johansson. Funkle Joe. Love him. We love Funkle Joey. But if you move Ryan Johansson's contract, that does free up. I get it frees up some some money. Are you going to be able to bring in a good, solid second line winger and a replacement for Ryan Johansson for the amount of money that you free up? Or do you feel like they're just going to move somebody up to center? For that, well, that second line, how is that going to work? Talk like how does well, that that's work? Well, that's a million. Uh, well, you you have two solid centers anyway, in Mikhail Granlin and Matt Duchesne. Uh, you would just mm-hmm. assume Duchesne would maybe move over and play one of those center spots, and maybe Granlin goes down to the second line. I mean, there there's a lot of possibility there. Um, but you know that that's something the Predators would have to consider for cap reasons too. Um, you know, the other thing has just been you know, kind of the asset management part. Uh, mm-hmm. Kevin Lankinen comes in for 1.5 million. Uh, we didn't really talk about this yet, but Zach Sanford, uh, the Predators right. signed him. He's kind of seems like he's going to be the Nick Cousins replacement mm-hmm. um, where he's kind of like the scrappy bottom pair guy who can move up if there's an injury. Uh, he's pretty solid defensively. Like his best defensive years were with St. Louis, obviously, um, not as good in Ottawa, but you know, mm-hmm. then again, that's kind of makes sense. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Do the math. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's a good fourth line signing. And there's certainly mm-hmm. a hole there. Uh, but I think that there, the more glaring need is going to be in that, in that top six. Yeah. And, and I think it's frustrating or it is a little bit anxiety producing to see some other kind of smaller needs addressed and waiting for that that second line because you're getting to a point where you've missed opportunities with a couple players and again I think Poyle in a lot of ways has been very very wise not to jump on some of these contracts because they were not going I mean they were too long term too much money not the right fit for where Nashville is at from a business perspective so I completely get that but you know hopefully you, there's a plan to find there's a couple free agents out there or there's a plan for a trade because I think it's going to be extremely discouraging if Nashville goes into next season and they have not filled the biggest hole that they had all of last season. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing is it seems like the Preds are running out of time. You're running out of options, at least on the open market. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought Nino Niederreiter would be an yes. absolutely perfect fit for what the Preds need. Uh, mm-hmm. As we've said before, apparently the, they can't find a, uh, a contract that works for him. Uh, of course, that was what Adam Vingen said uh, mm-hmm. on 1025 the other day. Maybe now that, uh, you know, we've gone a few days and Niederreiter still isn't officially signed. Maybe we're so. looking better. Yeah, maybe maybe that changes. I don't think Nita Ryder signed, has he? I haven't heard I don't anything. Know. No, I don't have either. I don't. Uh, I don't. It, I don't remember anything. But yeah. it's also been the weekend, people. It sometimes. has been the weekend. Um, so, and then you know, Phil Kessel is obviously still out there. Sit uh, by your phone, Phil. Yeah, there's uh, either one of those guys would be great for Nashville. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would absolutely, you know, maybe love to see one of the two of them. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see again, if there's a contract that makes sense, maybe something shorter term, if it's shorter term, you can afford to maybe throw some extra money out there. Yes. That contract's going to come off the books. 
Um, or, you know, hey, if they're willing to maybe take uh, a discount per year, then maybe you feel bad or less bad about giving them maybe some longer term. So, um, you know, we'll we'll see what comes of that. Preds certainly have some options. Um, one other, I guess, offseason note is <clears throat> Yakov Trenin, restricted free yeah. agent, files for arbitration. Um, yeah, no, not really a big surprise there. And uh, we'll, no. no arbitration date or anything set like that yet. I'm sure the Preds will still uh, negotiate. You would kind of imagine maybe two million a year, maybe like on a one or two year bridge deal, and, and then see where that gets them after this year. Yeah, I would agree. I think that's the ballpark we're at. I think Yakov Trenin was very smart to go to arbitration. Painfully underpaid. Absolutely the prototypical Nashville Predators player that they want. Um, identity, herd line, just you know. He need they they need to pay him, and I do feel like Nashville recognizes that. So I don't see this, like I said, I don't see this going all the way through arbitration. I think that they'll settle on something hopefully before then for our good friend Yakov Trenin. Yeah, let's hope so. Predators don't exactly have a uh, good track record. I know of, uh, keeping people happy when it comes to arbitration. Hi, Jay Weber. Um, <laughs> more to talk about today on the Locked On Predators podcast. Development camp is finally yes. in the books. Uh, and I know you spent a lot of time uh, down at Ford Ice Arena slash Centennial to, mm -hmm. um, you know, to scout the new Preds. I want to get your thoughts on that. We're also going to hear from some of the Preds' mm -hmm. top prospects, including Luke Prokop and Luke Evangelista. Coming up today on the Locked on Predators podcast, but first want to mention today's show brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. We have Major League Baseball in full swing, uh, and we also have the Home Run Derby tonight, MLB All-Star Game. That is what I was trying to think of. That's it. It's it's been a long weekend, guys. Just just bear with me. Um, but yeah, there's going to be plenty of uh, prop bets for that. Everything from uh, which side's going to get the win, which side gets the first hit. You know, which team is going to have like the most. You know, all all that good stuff. Um, it, everything from yeah yeah. If you want to. Uh, Put some money on that. BetOnline.net has you covered. They're your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check on all of your favorite scores and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. So, and let's talk a development camp, shall we? Um, we shall. The you attended uh, pretty much every practice this off season uh, to you know scout the young up and coming Preds. What are your overall thoughts on uh, on camp this year? I thought it was actually really great. The Predators have some great players in the system that are fun to watch. I always love going back for some of the prospects second year because you watch some of the first you know when they're coming in right off the draft they're coming in they're a little you know wide-eyed and you know they they new to development camp they kind of wobble between like wide-eyed and like oh my gosh and trying so hard to impress and so by the time you get them back for their second year of development camp you know they've had a season under their belts somewhere they're they've been through development camp and so i feel like the second season is the you know the second development camp is where you can really sort of see what players have and so i was excited to go back and watch some of the players that we've you know, I've seen previously and kind of see their growth. So for me, when I go to development camp, of course, I'm curious about who was just drafted. It was really, I loved getting to watch Joachim Kimmel and some of the other players that were drafted and have some observations about them. But I love going back and seeing the, the guys who are back for their second camp and sort of seeing their development and their comfort level. So it was fun for me to watch players like Luke Prokop, Zachary LaRue, you know, some of these guys that we've talked about and that were here last year, um, but you kind of got to see them more settled in. So development camp for anybody who has an opportunity to go, the practices are also open to the public and 
it's really a fantastic opportunity to see some of the young talent that the predators have. So I would encourage if, you know, if ever you can go to development camp, it's so fun. Yeah. Who's somebody that we really haven't talked about that you think really jumped out? Um, I would say somebody that we haven't talked about, and this for me happened more in the prospect showcase, which was on Friday. They divide the prospects into team Navy team gold, and then they play a game. It's really two 25 minute halves. So it's not like 60 minutes of hockey, but it's still delightful. Um, and there was a couple players that stood out to me, Adam Willsby, um, really great in a game situation, kind of had my eye on him and, and he stood out to me at times during the practices with some of the drills and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But when you put him in a game setting, I think that's where he really uh, shined. So he was one, another one, Ben Strinden, um, from Fargo, North Dakota, friends. Um, just a name that I really wasn't super familiar with, wasn't a player. I noticed his speed. This is somebody who can get up and down the ice like he was there. He was there. So there was definitely some players that I felt like um, maybe weren't the marquee names that a lot of people are familiar with that really had an opportunity to kind of show their stuff. So now there were, of course, some names that everybody came to see and and that was fun too but there were there were some really good little gems that i think got to show their skill at development camp yeah strinden a uh, seventh round pick this past draft um it's kind of an older guy uh drafted when he was 20 played in the us ushl this past year yeah. uh so certainly good to hear that he has some speed adam willsby and that's a guy that i think has risen up a lot of people's prospect rankings uh here lately it looks like he's gonna get a chance maybe in milwaukee this mm -hmm. year to kind of show what he did um you know of course he signed his entry level contract not too long ago um so you know he's 21 yeah. now i think a lot of people are kind of waiting for him to come in and be maybe have a sort of a big marquee year in milwaukee of course mark mark del Geizo is there yes um now he you know came in uh last year and kind of took the reins as milwaukee's number one lefty he's got willsby playing behind him now um so yeah i mean it seems like the predators are, are going to have a lot of defensive depth just in terms of younger guys mm -hmm. in milwaukee this year uh, so yeah. that's going to be exciting to see. One guy we may also have a chance to see in Milwaukee this year, possibly, is Luke Prokop. Um, mm -hmm. This is a guy, and we, of course, all know his story. Like, we right. all know, you know, about his coming out and, you know, a lot of the recognition he's gotten from that. But let's not let that overshadow the fact that he had – a absolutely breakout season last year yes. with the Edmonton Oil Kings. And I think that's the bigger thing is he, you know, the season he had, there's a lot of people I think that, you know, kind of saw pro cap as more of a, you know, maybe a fringe NHL guy, maybe somebody who is going to spend most of his career as like kind of a solid AHL guy. That opinion changed, I think, for a lot of people last season where he kind of put out this out of nowhere um, you know, offensive breakthrough season. Yeah. And Luke Prokop was one of the ones who I had only seen him in development camp once before last year. Now he was drafted in 2020, but they didn't have a development camp because of the pandemic and all that. So last year saw him at the development camp, kind of got a gauge for his play. He came back in this year and the amount of growth in his skill level and his game was just incredible. It was definitely one of the players where I thought, okay, there has been a ton of um, game development. There's been a ton of maturing on his part and really excited to see where he ends up and kind of what is next for him. Because I agree with you. I think people kind of felt like, okay, well, you know, here's this guy. I don't think we'll ever see him in the NHL, but I think he kind of has decided maybe that he's just not going to sit back and say, okay, you know, he, he really came into camp. And I will tell you also, Luke Prokop is a ton of fun to watch. We sat and watched them doing skating drills, which if you can ever go on skating drills day, it's amazing. Um, but doing some skating drills and his, 
just his facial expressions as he is working on certain skills. It's just, he is delightful. Luke Prokop is delightful. Like if ever I wished I had taken and smuggled in cookies and thrown on the ice, I would have hit Luke Prokop right in the face because he's so delightful. <laughs> and why did Anne get banned from every Nashville Predators That's podcast right. from here on out? Yeah. Uh, Prokop, that was ab about his future and where he kind of sees himself mm -hmm. uh, playing in the next couple of years. Um, that was one of the questions he was asked after development camp ended. Uh, let's hear a bite from Luke Prokop about that. I mean, just kind of, you know, my season ended not too long ago, so hoping that I can kind of just continue the way I was playing um, and show that in practice. Uh, you know, I, I had a, thought I had a really good end of my season, so just showcasing um, what it was like, you know, when I was when I was playing uh, in the morning. In terms of your expectations moving forward, where do you expect to be this year? What do you hope the next 12 months looks like for you? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of different options, you know, um, with me being 20, I can go back to junior or I can move up to pro. Um, you know, I'm just going to come into camp with an open mindset. Uh, you know, I'm going to put put the trust in their hands, uh, the management, and you know, they know what's best. I feel like, and um, you know, if they, if they want me to go back down for another junior, I'm all open for it. But I'm going to make it one hell of a decision for them. Call it a shot. I love right there. it. Yeah, <laughs> like saucy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. You know, that is pro cop is kind of an interesting spot. One would assume, and that he's going to be in Milwaukee next year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can't, I honestly can't imagine him not mm -hmm. playing with the Admirals next year. Um, although they did sign a couple of right-handed D-men next year, or, you know, Rolf yes. and Jordan Gross. So um, it is interesting. It seems like the Preds are giving options there. But, you know, at, the, at this point, I would say you probably want, you know, pro cop in the pros just to see what he can do. But, um mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see where he winds up next year. Yeah, I would love to see him in Milwaukee, but they, of course, don't ask my opinion. But I do feel like there was so much growth in his game from one development camp to this development camp. So I would be – I'm very curious to see how Milwaukee sorts it all out and where he does end up because I, I think he's got a ton, a ton of potential to play in Milwaukee. I'd be interested to see it. Yeah, uh, who knows what the Preds are doing with the Milwaukee <laughs> deck at this point. Connor Ingram's coming back, apparently. Didn't have that one on the radar. Yeah, I, I, I still can't. I still, I, I can't. Yeah. I just can't even. So, yeah. 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 Let's, let's just leave that one out there, shall we? Leave it out there. Uh, more Predators prospects to talk about, Dan. Yes. So love, of course, some of the, the names that everybody was talking about going into this camp. One at the top of the list, of course, was Luke Evangelista. Luke Evangelista had an absolute killer of a season with the London Knights. A couple weeks ago, I got to talk with Paige Martin, who's the in arena host and for the London Knights and talk about Luke and his season there. And it was great to get him on the ice to kind of see for myself where he was at. He's another one where I've seen once at development camp and he came back in and really felt like you could tell that he had put in a lot of work and, and really had grown over the season. One of the things that he talked about that he worked a lot on in his off season time before last season was worked on a lot of shooting drills, a lot of, um, placement, a lot of, you know, accuracy and that kind of thing. And I feel like that's something that we really got to see, not just during the practices, but also in the game, you know, he had, oh gosh, in the showcase, he had the most beautiful shot where he just found a pocket of net and was able to hit it perfectly. So loved seeing Luke Evangelista and for those who are curious, fabulous hair. He does have a flow. I feel he like does. that's- Maybe that's like one of the more underrated parts of the Preds prospect camp is just the flow on some of those <laughs> players coming in. You know what? I, I feel like the young guys are definitely representing in not just the hair arena, but also personality wise. There are some really cool, big, interesting personalities in, in among this young crop. And that's something that is not necessarily something you always see in a group of hockey guys. So it was, yeah, it was really fun to see some personality. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, Luke Evangelista, that's another guy who um, signed a ELC a while ago and his mm-hmm. contract has slid now twice. Um, another guy like Prokop who kind of rose up uh, the rankings last year, an absolutely monster season in juniors yes. with the London Knights. Uh, we kind of knew because he plays for the London Knights that maybe his development was going to be a little bit uh, more on the slow burn uh, just because the London Knights don't really play a lot of, mm-hmm. you know, younger players like draft year players. Uh, they really prioritize guys, you know, kind of in their plus one, their plus two year. Um, and that was where Evangelista was last year and came out and, you know, was one of the best scorers in all mm-hmm. of Canadian juniors. So there is all of a sudden another high end forward prospect that the Predators have kind of in their arsenal. Um, yeah. What, what did you see from Evangelista in camp this year, Ann? I really felt like there just is a general maturity to him. Not that he's not fun and, and have a lot of personality, but just a general maturity, more settled in his game. I felt like, again, his shooting definitely stood out to me. And I feel like just a better, well-rounded game. You know, as these players get more experience in the juniors and they come to development camp, they start to really fill out their game. And you can see that happening with Luke Evangelista. Now, I know a lot of people... We're so excited about the season that he had in juniors. And we're like, hey, maybe he's the next Phil Tomasino. Like, hey, maybe we're going to see him in Nashville. You're not going to see Luke Evangelista in Nashville this season. You know, I'm just putting it out there. But this is somebody to definitely keep an eye on wherever he lands, because he's somebody that definitely has a ton of NHL potential. It's definitely more maturing to do some more skills to kind of work on, but a fun player. It will be interesting to see again, where he, you know, where he's going to land and how he does kind of at a next level. But yeah, Luke Evangelista is, he was really, it was great to see him and kind of see just the growth of his game. Yeah. Same situation as pro cop. Uh, he has mm-hmm. options, whether it's, it's juniors or pros and same situations pro cop. You would expect to see him uh, in Milwaukee next season. Uh, we talked many times before about Carl Taylor and uh, you know, wow. how in tune he is with helping players kind of develop into what the Preds kind of want that player to be. Uh, that's something that Evangelista talked about at camp this week as well yeah yeah the admirals and the preds i mean uh you know coach Hines did uh you know a presentation for us on just you know what they expect from their players and what they're looking for from players so i think that was really helpful for all of us and um yeah i'm pretty familiar with the milwaukee staff already so just to see them and work with them again was uh really good for my development yeah, I think that's kind of the big thing is just that there is sort of a unified vision from the top down on, look, this is the kind of hockey we want you to play. And it seems like, you know, the Preds are, you know, John Hines is the general, like that's the execution. Uh, but yeah. Carl Taylor is like the really good boot camp instructor. And I mean, yeah. how many times have we seen a Preds player come in, like a young Preds player come in, um, maybe – not being used quote unquote in the way um, you know they're used to or the way like we would expect them to they go down to Milwaukee for a while and come back you know kind of with an entirely different skill set mm-hmm. um, you know we we saw it last year with Cody Glass Cody Glass yes up and sort of had you know a new edge to his game uh, a lot more speed kind of a lot more intensity uh, and we saw the same thing you know a couple years back with Ellie Tolvanen you know, yes. he was sort of, you know, the the high end, you know, offense first sellout on offense kind of prospect. Um, you know, he was in Milwaukee probably longer than I think some Preds fans would want. Comes back as more of, you know, kind of a solid two way forward. So yes. Carl Taylor, I think, definitely knows what they're doing. I think the Preds know what they're doing. Yes, I think we're very fortunate to have the development system that the Predators have, because like you said, you can take somebody who's got a very specific high level skill set and round out their game. And and that's key. You have to have a well-rounded game if you want to be successful in the NHL. And that is something that Carl Taylor, like you said, you can see it with people like Cody Glass or Ellie Tolvin. And this is um, a system that really fills out a player's game. And, and that's to Nashville's benefit every time. Yeah. 
Uh, one last guy to talk about, Ann, and we've talked about him a little bit before. Uh, the guy that I call the human Mountain Dew. Uh, and that is that is Zachary Lahiro. Oh uh, that is a guy that I think not only uh, is going to be a good player for the Preds, uh, but somebody who Preds fans he's gonna he's gonna wind up being a fan favorite. Yes, he is like Ryan Johansson with chili flakes on top. Like he is so so. First of all, he rocks an absolutely amazing mullet. So. Props for that. Uh, but he is, he. we were talking about this at development camp with some of our friends from On the Forecheck. He has one gear and it is bat poop crazy. Like that is Zachary LaRue's gear. Like he does, there's no like 80%. Hey, let's do this drill at 80%. There is no 80%. He is human Mountain Dew. That is, is such a great description of him. He has an edge to his game. And when I say he has an edge to his game, I mean, our boy has been suspended several times. Yes. So there is, you know, let's work on that, Zachary. Let's find, you know, we, we talked about one of the things that John Hines said all season long is, you know, you, you play on an edge and you don't want to go over and, and end up hurting the team in penalties. So that's definitely an area of opportunity for Zachary, but he really has such, I mean, he has a great skill game, but you combine his skill with his sass and he, you are a hundred percent right. He is somebody who will be a fan favorite. Yeah. Uh, let's hear from Zachary Lahiru. I'm bringing, you know, a lot of energy, you know, my physicality is, is also a big factor, but you know, I'm bringing that offense. I'm bringing, you know, that, that flair that I have to my game and that, you know, I think uh, I've been, you know, known to known to have uh, over the last few years and what they drafted me for. So, you know, I want to be a player that can, you know, be an impact. And, you know, somebody that can change the game for them night in, night out. So, you know, it's, uh, it, of course, it's a bit harder to show in practice. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, we have a good week ahead in the game on Friday that uh, I'll be able to kind of show a bit more. Like to stir the pot a little bit from time to time. Yeah, you know, that, uh, that part of the game, I definitely don't shy away. So, you know, I... You, know, you want to be skilled, you want to be powerful, but, you know, hitting and, and, and my style of play, I definitely, you know, don't shy away from uh, from that side. Dare yeah, I Zachary, say, yes. dare I say, maybe some Brad Marchand? Yes. I was just, I was just going to say his style of play, like, makes Mark Borvietsky look like the nanny. Like, <laughs> so much. I don't even know what the word is, but you know it when you see it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like I, I say Marshawn. Obviously, I think the hero is a little bit bigger, a little bit beefier. Um, almost, you know, kind of a mix of like maybe Tom Wilson thrown mm -hmm. with Brad Marshawn too, where just like he's gonna, you know, play so hard he pisses you off and gets you <laughs> off the game. Yes. But I think also like Marshawn, you know, he has the offensive capability of backing that up. Like he can go yes. out there and, um, you know, he can, you know, piss you off. You get a penalty and then he's the one that scores on the power play. So I think that's, mm -hmm. you know, as long as, you know, he kind of keeps his head clean and develops a little bit. Um, that's something that I think Lahiro is going to fill a big need for the Nashville Predators. Um, and I know there, there's um, old school hockey fans, you know, maybe somebody remembers the name Martin LaPointe, who was a big player for the Red Wings in their early cup runs. Um, that's somebody, you know, uh, obviously is an old school Red Wings fan. Uh, I can, you know, kind of vouch for that. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of old names out there that I think uh, Lahiro is definitely a throwback player that I think a lot of old school hockey fans can have somebody in mind, maybe from like the 90s or 80s that yes. they kind of remind you of. Yeah, he's the player that you really, really want on your team, and you're going to laugh every time he does something. But if you're playing against him, he's not an ounce funny, and you don't like him. He's just – that's just – that's just how he navigates um, on the ice, you know. So yeah. super fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, somebody I think Preds fans are going to absolutely fall in love with down For sure. the road. Um, yeah, so development camp in the books. Uh, a lot of exciting uh, things to talk about and a lot of reasons for being excited if you're yes. a Preds fan. Uh, 
you got to be happy with the future of this team. Uh, obviously, some development camp standouts over the past few years have been guys like Tanner Janot. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah. So there we go. There's definitely some hidden gems in there. There are. There are. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Uh, Anne, where can the people find your work? You can find my work at on the and you can find me on Twitter at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. I'm Nick Morgan. You can find my work at on the Follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. Also, while you're there, be sure to follow the podcast at LO underscore Predators. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment. It helps other Preds fans find this video. That's going to do it for us today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We'll be back tomorrow with an all-new episode. See you then.